So I have a pair of headphones I found on eBay. They were about $15 after shipping. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be opening them up. I'm going to be taking out the original drivers and I'm going to be replacing them with some updated drivers. Um, when I'm done, I probably won't even actually be done. What I'm going to be doing is trying out some ideas, seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, everything I do won't be permanent because I will probably come back through later and change them again. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So they are Frost phones. They have number 163, 1500 stamped below that. I couldn't find much information about them online, but some something said they were from World War II. I don't know. So, I'm going to start by removing the ear cups from the headband. And, you know, that's kind of dingy. It's kind of worn, but I like the way it looks. So I'm not going to be doing much to the headband. I'm just going to set it aside. I'm only going to be showing y'all one side because it's going to be identical on both sides. So I'm just going to take one of them and set it aside. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the cup. This just screws off. this off you can see the original parts in there I'm not sure if they work I'm not sure I could even would even know how to get them working so I'm just gonna take them out see a couple flat screws on the back I did notice that these two are held in place there like that so I'm just gonna use my finger to hold that still All right, because I plan on using all that again, I'm gonna put them in a safe place. All right, so I'll take out this other part. Just one, and then the last screw there. All right, like I said, I'm not gonna be doing anything permanent to these. Everything I'm gonna do can be undone. So knowing that, I'm not gonna get rid of those. I'm just gonna put them someplace safe and out of the way. All right, so this leaves me with an empty ear cup. You can see there's lots of room to work in there. Um, I do want to preserve the original look as much as possible on the outside. So I'm going to be sure I don't cover up those holes because I'm going to be putting those screws back into them later. So when I ordered these, I didn't know what size the ear cup was. I um, measured it when I got them, and it turns out they're 50 millimeters. And I just happen to have 50 millimeter drivers available. I got these out of an old set of headphones. I don't know what brand they were. I don't know what weight they were. Um, I got them dirt cheap. Um, because they were broken and so I just took the drivers out and threw everything else away. So a couple things we need to do. We need to get a cable to run to them. So one of my goals in this is to do this as cheaply as possible. So I found a pair of earbuds that have a mic on them and I simply took the earbud off, desoldered the wires, I didn't cut them, I desoldered them because I wanted them to stay tinned. And I'm going to be attaching those to that. So, one of the challenges I faced was when you put these drivers in this conveniently sized ear cup, 
they don't stay still. So I thought of a couple different ways to try. Um, one of my first ideas was I had some fairly dense foam that I cut into rings and I was going to put this down like that and have the driver right on top of that. It actually fits quite well. It's very snug. It feels very secure. Problem is I didn't want it to affect the sound by muffling that. So although it would work, and I know these aren't going to probably sound like the best headphones ever, I don't want to do anything to sabotage it. So I came up with a different idea. After looking at the way other headphones were built, I've noticed that they usually adhere them using the magnet on the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that on there and use that to support the magnet, or to support the driver. All right, so I've cleaned up my workspace a little bit. When I go to put these back together, I don't want these holes just out and open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original hardware. I'm going to put it back in. So the two longer screws, the shorter one, the nuts, and the lock washers. So I'm going to put this longer screw in and drop that lock washer on it. Do it again on this side. All right. When I'm tightening these down, I want to get them snug enough so that it doesn't rattle or fall out. But I also don't want to tighten them down so much that it cracks the casing. All right, so for the center one, what I did was I removed the terminal connector from the original driver system. And what I'm going to do is when I go to wire on the cable, I'm going to use that to clamp the cable into place, like so. Um, probably when I rebuild these in the future, I'm going to use the built-in terminal connectors to connect to the driver. But for the moment, with these super thin wires, I'm going to solder directly to the driver and then I will use this to clamp down on that. So I'm going to set these two out of the way for now. Back in my handy dandy box. Alright. Time to get the soldering iron. So these screws are short enough that they won't interfere with the body of the driver. But I think if it were an issue, you could just take out a Dremel, take off the top a little bit. So, I'm just going to pick a side and thread these up through one of the openings. And do a quick solder. Like I said, these are already tinned, and so it should just be a matter of quick connection on them I never like soldering on these plastic parts I always feel like I'm going to melt them which I have a couple of times not this time though so I checked it, there's sound coming out, sounds good. Next thing we're going to do is clamp down that wire using the old part. I'm going to feed the screw up to the bottom. I'm going to just start it in there. I'm going to do this without damaging my driver.
tucked under there. So I'm gonna leave myself enough room to work, but not so much that I shorten the cables too much. And again, when I'm tightening this down, I don't want to break anything. Just want it snug enough to hold everything in place. All right. So again, nothing I'm doing is going to be too permanent. So what I'm going to do is take some double-sided tape, put it on each end of this foam, and should just be a matter of snugging everything down. Put this side directly on the driver. Press that a little bit so I can get it all together. Ah. I'm going to take these screws out. I thought the clearance was good. Again, I'm not getting rid of anything. I'm just... Let's see how that works. Hot dog. So now it's just a matter of snugging this cap back on. Foam's really trying to work against me here. Alright. I don't want to screw it down on there too tight. Just snug enough. So I'm going to do a sound test. And I'll be right back. Make sure I didn't break anything. Alright, so I tested it. It's working. Sounds good. Doesn't sound like there's any damage to it. I'm going to finish up the other ear cup real quick. I will be back to put it all back together. So I'm back. I got the other cup finished up real quick. So now I'm going to take the band. I'm just going to put them back together real quick. And there we have it. I know these aren't marked left or right, but luckily it has a mic, so easy to see. Well, that's it.